Final Fantasy is a storied franchise. Named Final Fantasy because it was the final effort of Squaresoft, the subsequent success brought the floundering company back from the brink of bankruptcy and has been transporting millions to fantasy worlds over the past 30 years. With 30 years of history, to say that this series has baggage would be an understatement. Final Fantasy has been a part of my life for over 20 years. I fell in love with the series thanks to Final Fantasy VII, and I have pre-ordered every entry since 1998. However, when Final Fantasy X released, I noticed something that bothered me. Yes, the visuals were amazing, the characters memorable, and the story punched you in the gut, but the overworld wasn't there anymore. The journey felt linear and claustrophobic. The problem that most people have with 13 actually started with 10. The problem is that when you expand detail, you contract scope. What do I mean by that? Well, look at this map of the US. Here is LA, here is New York. In order to have both in our periphery, we have to zoom out to a point where these places are mere pixels. You and I both know that these dots actually represent extremely intricate places. Yet, if we were to show that intricacy by zooming in, then the other city leaves our periphery. It's still there, but we can only focus on so much at a time. That's especially true for video games, considering their limited resources. Even today, with as far as we've come, there are limits to what developers can do. Yet most games have taken the route of expanding in scope. The Witcher began in a single city, and The Witcher 3 took place in a sprawling and densely packed open world. Some franchises expanded and rebranded into something new. Assassin's Creed began development as a Prince of Persia game after all. Even games that started off as large have just become larger. Grand Theft Auto has gone from a single city to a huge sprawling area of varying environments. Conceptually, the scope of these experiences are dwarfed by Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy was one of the first games I played whose scope included an entire world. However, it didn't have much detail, so it's most definitely a smaller experience than the aforementioned open world games. You could be forgiven for thinking that the population of the planet in Final Fantasy VII didn't break a couple thousand. Thanks to the first few Final Fantasy games that I played, my expectation was to have an entire world and a grandiose journey to experience. Yet, what makes Final Fantasy XV work is neither of those things. Final Fantasy XV is an open world, not an entire one. The parts of the story that resonate are personal with the grandiose acts taking place mostly off screen. What is? Insomnia falls. What? This is probably one of the most frustrating parts about Final Fantasy XV. Why should I have to pay the asking price of Kingsclave in order to understand the setup for the story I paid over $50 for? And why is it that all the important events that I can't spoil happen off screen? It's important to note that during the final act of the story, you are bombarded with information, and that during these sections, the game becomes a linear hallway a la 13. Luckily, these areas are extremely short, representing a handful of hours at best. And it was at this point that I realized that the game just hadn't contracted in scope, but also in narrative. The real story actually isn't the typical grandiose melodrama. That's just a backdrop, a framework. The actual story is about four friends bonding on a road trip. Nearly every mechanic in the game exists to service this thematic core, and it's here where 15 really succeeds and offers a resonant and human tale. In fact, there's an insignificant mechanic where one character is constantly taking photos, and you have to save the ones that you like the most. The payoff to this mechanic is easily to predict, but that doesn't make it any less impactful. From a gameplay perspective, I mentioned in my review of Lightning Returns that Square was keenly aware of the monotony of menu selection. I mean, the fights are basically menu selection, so going to the skills you need to to easily dispatch a certain kind of enemy just becomes muscle memory. And when the game asks you to do this for hundreds of battles, it's easy to go into autopilot. Once again, I personally think Square is keenly aware of this. See? I did say that. And while many will compare the combat aesthetic to Kingdom Hearts, I think it's more accurate to compare it to Lightning Returns. See, there's this thing called game feel. Game feel is a term that was popularized by Steven Swink. If you don't play video games, then it's something that's hard to explain. Part of what makes games so compelling is the tactile sense of interaction. On their most basic level, games are about pressing a button and something happening. 
Whether or not that thing feels good is dependent mostly on visual and audio feedback. The unfortunate truth of it is, is that trying to describe how a game feels is like trying to describe the taste of something. You begin thinking about how other things tasted to contextualize the experience. For example, what does chocolate taste like? Sweet? Okay, what does sweet taste like? This automatically conjures foods you've eaten as a way to contextualize the concept of sweet. You see what I'm getting at? It's why a lot of my reviews involve comparisons to other games in order to give you an idea of how the game tastes. Around four hours in, I came to a conclusion that stuck with me for the rest of the game. This game is an evolution of Lightning Returns. Now, from the outset, the game felt like an MMO. You talk to a quest giver and then kill level one scorpions. The typical MMO gameplay loop is present throughout the open world. Talk to quest giver, go complete the request, and then return to the quest giver for a reward. I expected to be calling this game an offline version of Final Fantasy IV. However, as I was talking to this guy, his barely animating face, the way the shot was framed, the way the camera cut from Noctis to him, Noctis not animating very well, I started having flashbacks. I'm waiting for my replacement, but he, he hasn't shown. He's been late before, but never as bad as this. You're starting to worry, right? Now, I'm sure there are a lot of games that do this, but this is where I first noticed the similarity. I mean, even Lightning Returns had mundane MMO quests. And as I played, I realized that the buttons I was pressing during combat and the actions they were performing were eerily similar to Lightning Returns. I was holding down this button to attack and pressing this button to defend. Holding down on the defend button drained a finite resource that would leave me defenseless if drained completely. If I guarded at the right time, I would be able to counterattack and do even more damage. Even while exploring the world, there is a running mechanic that runs off of a gauge that depletes as you run. The jumping feels similar, picking up items feels similar. Over and over, the similarities just pile up. And it's true that some of those similarities are through lines to other Square Enix properties, but these games just feel the same to me in the I'm pressing buttons kind of way. Now I want to stress that these games are not completely the same. To use the food analogy again, it's the difference between meatloaf and hamburger. Both use ground beef, but the way they're presented and with what ingredients is what gives each dish its identity. In Lightning Returns, you would switch movesets by by changing costumes. And in Final Fantasy XV, you switch movesets by changing weapons. How you do this is different, but the design intent is similar. So the way it feels is similar. In some ways, Lightning Returns does things better. It has better camera control and an arguably more complex system. Yes, at the outset, these buttons do the same thing, but you can eventually customize those actions. Whereas in 15, you can't. Moreover, because battles take place in these arenas, it's easier to see what's going on. The biggest problem with 15, from a design perspective is most certainly the camera and the way things get in the way. Yet Final Fantasy XV does many things better than Lightning Returns. For example, there's no time limit and the warping mechanic feels smooth as butter. Honestly, I'm glad that Square didn't abandon their philosophy with Lightning Returns and the result is a compelling battle system that engages you moment to moment. Certainly there are times where it feels unresponsive and that you're directing the action more than controlling it, but those complaints are minor once you get the hang of how this system works. My biggest complaint aside from the camera, involves the open world. It's almost too damn big. I don't believe these measurements of space for a second. It shouldn't take seven minutes and a quarter tank of gas to travel three miles on an open road. Yet because of the size, driving around in your car is a necessity. So you'll spend the vast majority of your playthrough waiting in that car, doing nothing. Thankfully, kind of, once you've visited a place, you can teleport there instantly. But now, instead of waiting in a car, you're waiting behind a loading screen. Some have said that being able to teleport makes the game more convenient, and in some cases, yes. But it does kind of mess with the pace of the game. Ultimately, this is a game that's just fun to play. The focus on action-oriented gameplay keeps you engaged from start to finish. Just like... Okay, I'll stop. The way this game looks is kind of a mixed bag. By and large, the naturalistic aesthetic is drop-dead gorgeous. However, there are situations where you'll notice the limitation of the hardware really impeding the way the game looks. Shadows will draw in. There's a distance limit to reflections, and there's a ton of aliasing. The frame rate is kind of eh, but the juddering caused by intermittent poor frame timing could be a deal breaker for some. Personally, it made me ill from time to time. If you don't notice it, it won't be a problem. It makes me long for the game 
game on PC. And I really hope Square puts forth the effort to do a good port eventually. If these things don't bother you, or you don't notice them, then the game is visually stunning. Scale plays a huge part in the game's aesthetic, and the contrast between how tiny you are and how large things like astrals are really gives this overwhelming visual punch to the game. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the music in the game. There are a couple notable tracks, but by and large, the music is forgettable, which is a terrible thing to say about a Final Fantasy game. Even if you hated 13, the music was pretty good. Thankfully, they allow you to listen to music from other games, and I did, all the time. Get a load of this beautiful view. Yeah, like something out of a dream. Just don't fall asleep on me. It's also weird that the main song of the game is a cover of a song from the 60s. I mean, now, it's an absolutely fantastic song, but just weird for Final Fantasy to reach into Americana like that. Oh, and for the record, I prefer Ben E. King's version. Florence and the Machine is great, but King's version just has a little bit more grit and desperation to it. The voice acting is also notably better in 15. The actors turn in moving and human performances. They sell these four in a way that is actually kind of astounding. The dialogue and the way these four interact feels natural. These felt like people, and without the solid performances of Ray Chase, Robbie Damon, Adam Grossell, and Chris Parson, the game wouldn't have worked. The supporting cast also did a great job. Darren DePaul made Arden a memorable antagonist that kind of hovers between frenemy and Kefka level of nuts. Was it worth the wait? Yes, from my perspective. Now, I know that may conflict with what a lot of people are saying. There's this unfortunate belief that with a 10-year development cycle, the game should have a lot to show for that time. But that's simply not the way art works. The Witcher 3 took three and a half years to develop. Even with pre-existing assets, that's kind of nuts. Yet its breadth of content isn't represented in most games with even a four-year development cycle. Indeed, I'd argue that its main competition in 2015, Bloodborne, was a better experience despite having much less content. My question isn't whether or not there's 10 years of work there, but whether or not what's there is good, and by and large the answer for 15 is yes. That can't be said for other games with similar development cycles. Remember 2Human? Good, no one does because it was garbage and it took 9 years to develop. Now this isn't to say that the game doesn't falter at certain points. No game is perfect, but taken as a whole, Final Fantasy XV is very impressive. Many are saying that this is the best Final Fantasy game since 10. I'd argue that it's the best Final Fantasy game since 7. If you can let go of expectation, then you'll be pleasantly surprised.